That's one of the country's biggest regeneration projects that's already seen several ministers come and go. Today, the new Thames Gateway Minister, Caroline Flint, has been to see how work to transform North Kent is progressing. So what is the Thames Gateway? Well, it covers a 40-mile stretch along the Thames estuary, covering Kent, London and Essex. The aim is to regenerate the area, creating whole towns from scratch. A huge part of that project is building more homes, 160,000 in total. But none of this comes cheap, and the government, through our taxes, is investing more than £9 billion in the region. Our reporter, Sarah Smith, spent the day with the minister and brings us this report. Until today, Caroline Flint had only seen this place on paper. As the new housing minister, she got the job a month ago, she's now in charge of it. This corner of the Thames Gateway is the Rochester Riverside development, a 70-acre brownfield site ready for building on. I think you can really begin to sense all the potential of the site. And of course, over the next year, uh, some of the development is really going to start happening, homes and buildings, but also the green spaces. There's going to be a school on this site. Um, I mean, it's just wonderful to see what is possible for an area, I think, for many years, people saw as run down, not being used as the industry has moved away. By the end of this year, work will have started building the first 600 homes on this site. In 15 years, the aim is to have 2,000 homes here, along with a hotel, a primary school, and to have this whole waterfront area opened up for walkers. There are those keeping a watchful eye on all that building, though, determined to ensure brownfield development stays with just that. This is the start of something great, but we must make sure that the Thames Gateway isn't used as a Trojan horse to destroy the last green spaces that we've got in Kent. This afternoon, the Minister arrived by Fast Track Bus at another gateway development. Of the bridge in Dartford, the first residents moved in just before Christmas, and the doctor surgery school and business park are all promised. Mark Woodhouse moved in just a month ago. He lives here with his wife and their two sons. It may be a building site at the moment, they admit, but they're happy to call it home. I think from a family point of view, it's really, we're very keen to see a school happen here. The Lisbon is going to be a school as part of this uh, community. And I think that's absolutely key. Um, but also a provision of a community space that we can use um, you know, for all kinds of different things. Um, but as well as that, um, I think green space as well. There's still a long way to go, but this was the new minister's chance to see what for thousands of families could be their future. Well, Sarah Smith joins us now live from Chatham, which is just down the river from Rochester Riverside. Sarah, even assuming that only brownfields fight for you, there are still concerns, aren't there? Well, there are. I think everybody now accepts that brownfield sites, sites that have been built on or had industry on before, that's the way forward. The concerns are over the infrastructure and whether all that is put in place as quickly as all these new homes are going up. And there are also concerns about making sure that all the new buildings are as energy efficient and as water efficient as they possibly can be to cope with a changing environment. And that's where some people, uh, they're concerned that that's really not yet underway. Okay, Sarah, thanks very much.